that we've set up our dynamometer with our dyno T main box. We've got the right power, air supply if we have onboard AFR. Now we need the software to actually talk to all of these electronics. That's known as DynoJet Power Core. You can obtain this from our website in the download section and start working with it. This is known as our application launcher. Once you cl double click to open DynoJet Power Core and install the software, you'll have these options here. Data center, that's where you can review your graphs and dyno runs. C3 tuning software, which you will utilize for Power Commander, Power Vision 3, Power Vision Original, Dyno Control. This is where you're going to control your dynamometer. So you're starting and stopping runs, watching live gauges and other items within Dyno Control. And then also Pod 300 Device Manager. This is if you have already used or have a Pod 300 and wish to work with some data logs that are saved within the Pod 300 Device Manager. So each of these applications are selectable to perform an install. You would not have to install C3. You would not have to install Device Manager, Pod 300 Device Manager, if you're not planning on working with tuning products and you are only doing, say, dynoing of motorcycle or car. As a generic dyno user, let's keep this focused for you. You've set your, your dyno up and you want to start using it. First up for all dyno users is the tools option here. This is very important to know where your run files are going to be saved and which software you're, you're running. So in general, this options pane with the general tab here, you can choose your theme, the colorations that you want for each of these windows. Our generic one is the Office 2010 Black. That is our default. Also, which version of software you want to run is the beta build, which has faster releases and is more up to date with recent features. Also, registration of global hotkeys. This lets your F9, 10, 11, 12 be registered so your computer and power core has access to use those as functional buttons. And then the diagnostic log level. If you are ever prompted from tech support that you need a very detailed log, you've encountered an issue, you found a bug, tech support may request this information from you. And you can change the level of logging that happens with this dropdown. There is, of course, defaulting settings where this will set you back to the way Power Core was delivered. If you get some settings that are, are weird and you just want to go back to a factory delivered state, click on that button. And then all defaults, you can restore application default values. This includes things like your templates for graphs, the, where the windows are docked in each application. Next up is channels. This is important for dyno operators to know which correction factor you're always going to run. So whether you want to run uncorrected or the SE correction factor or all the way down to STD, that could be your chosen correction factor that you want your shop to use to display on dyno runs and have that corrected power from the data gathered by your atmospheric stick. So humidity, pressure, temperature, all those that affect horsepower, that would be your correction factor. And then you'll see here on the left, all of the available channels. So for speed, if you want that in kilometers per hour or power you want in Fedstraka or kilowatts or horsepower, each of those are selectable right here. You'll also notice that if we do interact with one of these, if we don't want to see RPM multiplied by a thousand, if we click on RPM, you'll notice this radio button now has jumped to custom. So we are customizing our types of units that we want to to work with and to be displayed or logged. Um, standard will set you to the standard American units. Metric would be uh, setting those kilometers per hour or changing of pressure from inches of mercury to millibars. So standard metric and then Japanese as we have here. Down here, depending on the devices that you have loaded up on your dyno, whether you have an AFR module, atmospheric stick, or a retarder controller, you can break those channels into devices. So if you don't want all your channels to pop out and just see one giant long list, you can break those into devices. So if you just want to see your main box channels separate from your AFR box, separate from your Atmos stick, click on this, this check mark here. And then also show advanced channels within each of those devices should you desire. Break channels into categories. This is just a further graduation of displaying the channels that you see by device. Then you could have it a category within that device. The stoic point is also important where you can change this value from 14.7 if that's what you want all of your uh, run files and data to be gathered. Um, so if you enter a, a lambda of 1.0, that would be 14.7 AFR. Or if you change this in tuning realm to 14.1, 14, 14 of note here is you've changed the stoic value. And this it's not changing the tune, it's changing the way 
that the values are displayed to you. So if you entered one for a target Lambda now with it set to 14.1, that would be targeting 14.1 AFR. So again, that's just a note to mention. Next up is the ECU tuning tab. So this is if you're going to be interacting with the DinoJet PowerVision 3, where the default templates or the definition files are being saved at that allows you to open a DinoJet tune file. Next up important for Dino operators is the other tab here where we can select where our Dino runs are being saved. So you'll see the default here is in your documents and Dino runs folder. Here on DinoJet campus, we save it to a network drive. You can browse to a different default should you wish to save it on a different, different location as well. Same is true with your gauge templates where you want your Dino RT gauge templates, whether that be for C3 or for Dino control. After you get all your, your channels right and your gauges looking right, wherever you save that template, this is where those would be saved too. Then also a neat feature down here for backups. DinoJet devices, anytime you enumerate over USB to say a PowerVision 3 or a Power Commander, it takes and saves the data file within a Power Commander or all the tunes within a PowerVision 3 to this specified folder. You can disable that should you wish to not enumerate and resave all of those. This is helpful if you ever connect to a device and then you delete your tune or something happens, rest assured it has saved in this folder should you wish to go back and, and grab it. Of course, you can change the language of your PowerCore software, how words are displayed, the comma separator, whether you're exporting Excel to Excel to be reviewed, your delimiter that delimits in between samples or channels, it can be a comma, a semicolon, or what, whatever you should choose that is used in your, in your country. There's also setting of firewall exceptions. So sometimes this is necessary when you do connect to your main box, especially if you are direct connecting to your main box from ethernet to the computer without say going to a, a switch and then through your, your network in your shop. Sometimes the computers can be, they won't accept the dyno where RT main box is a valid ethernet source. So you just need to check this box to set that exception. And of course we can remove that from your computer setting that firewall exception to not permit access through that port or that ethernet connection, should you so wish. Uh, down here in the bottom, this goes for all changes to any setting. You can click okay to set and save those and then close this window. You can click cancel if you don't wish to save any of the changes that you made, or you can just click apply to apply your changes, but stay within the uh, application launcher options here. Still under this tools tab, another important item for Dino, Dino users is your license manager. This is where you would actually have to have a C3 account. Uh, this will give you access to the C3 tuning software, and you can view the licenses that you have for whether it be individual tune compats or your global permissions, if you're a user level one or a three, and then other items within your your account. If you do not have an account, you can create one here. This would also be what you would use on the dinojet.com website to make purchases. So if you do have an account over there, this is where you would enter your username and password. Next up is the hardware manager. So now that we have our Dinoware connected, this is where if we needed to do a firmware update, you would check these boxes, see if there is an update for any of these devices, whether it be a Dinoware RT main box or a retarder controller or whatever device you're connected to, they're all displayed here. Um, also, we do have a PowerVision 3 connected, so it does indicate there's an update available for this. And this is the firmware indicated. If you do ever have a main box or an AFR box that does need an update, you can click on auto update. This would bring down the latest factory delivered file from DinoJet, or you can auto update your device. Or if you have a different firmware file that you've manually downloaded, and now you want to update your DinoRT main box firmware, or your AFR module, whatever it might be, you can click on the manual update and then navigate to that DFU file you've downloaded and then load that manually to the device. And then lastly here at the bottom is checking for updates. So since I did have that beta option checked for keep me on uh, the latest beta releases, this is indicating that I do have a beta software update that I could update to today. So we do have a new beta out as of today, and then I could download it and proceed with that update. Next up is the help button. So help is very important. This will navigate you to our DinoJet PowerCore help. It's very descriptive, you know, working with tools, basically all the stuff that we just went over, it is available in PDF form or interactive HTML form right here. 
And take note, this is when you click on the help in the application launcher, it will take you to the application launcher specific help. If you're in Dino Control and you click that help button, it will take you to the Dino Control specific help section. Exporting diagnostics here is something you may be prompted with by tech support. So if you've encountered a bug or something on your Dino, you can export the diagnostic history. So this would have all of your button clicks and, and window drags that you have done within PowerCore should you encounter a bug. And you can save this to your, your downloads folder or documents or wherever it might be, and then submit that to our, our brilliant tech support team where they can help you with any sort of difficulties you may be having. Viewing of the release notes, this is important. Should you have this new update of PowerCore? Anytime we do have a new release of PowerCore, we put our release notes, what we've changed in the software here. You can read through these, save them, print them for your review at a later date as well. Uh, shortcut keys, this is extremely helpful for a new dyno operator, especially for you know just turning on load control. Well, if you're in the middle of a, a dyno session and you don't want to hit the yellow button on the pendant or click in software, you could just hit the L button on your keyboard and turn on load control. This is very, very powerful. There's a lot of neat features our DinoJet software engineers have built into this software to make your life easier, faster, and pump through dyno runs as, as quickly as possible. And then the About tab right here, you can see our version right here, 3.2.0 build 4, and it does say that we do have that update ready. We need to restart PowerCore for that. So that is also available to see what version you are on. And then of course over here on the right is closing where this would close our application launcher and close PowerCore entirely.